I sat at the kitchen table drinking my third cup of coffee and looking out the window at the backyard. The grass was ankle high, the flower beds were overgrown with weeds, and the roses were badly in need of pruning. It was all Dan had to take care of. The front door creaked when opened, and the shower head in the upstairs bedroom was leaking. My car needed a brake and oil change, lots more things that Dan usually took care of. There were lots of other things Dan usually took care of, like holding me in his arms until I fell asleep and snuggling up to me in the mornings. Dan had built-in radar that picked up on my moods. I can't even count the number of times I've come home from work exasperated and found dinner on his table and a pitcher of margaritas chilling in the fridge and touching. He never passed me without reaching out to touch me. When we sat on the couch, reading or watching TV, one hand was sure to touch me. His kisses made my knees weak, and his smile warmed my heart. The grass doesn't get cut, the weeds don't get pulled, the rose bushes don't get trimmed, and no one touches me anymore because Dan is gone. He's gone, and I can just die. Dan burst into my life just when I thought everything was settled. I had just gotten my marketing degree and landed a job at one of the top advertising agencies in the city. My regular client, who I had been working with for the past three years, made me an offer and I accepted. I got what I wanted. Mark was handsome, smart, and just a tiger in bed. I was ready. All the eyes were dotted and I had to dot all the eyes. And then Dan came into my life. It was my first day on the job. I stepped into the elevator and pressed the third floor button when a voice called out, hold the elevator please. I grabbed the door with my hand and it opened as a man hurriedly entered the cabin. Thank you. I'm running late this morning and these elevators are so slow it could be five minutes before they're down again. Five please. I pressed five and then turned to face him and looked into the deepest brown eyes I'd ever seen. He smiled at me and my world turned upside down and inside out. If there was anyone in that elevator with us who knew me, saw the look on my face, understood it, and asked, what about Mark? I truly believe I would have replied, Mark? Who is Mark? Until that very moment, I had never believed in love at first sight and what it can do to you. I just stared at him for a few moments and then hurriedly said, my name is Katie, and I just started working here today. The elevator stopped at the third floor and the door opened and I just stood there looking at him until the door started to close. He reached out his hand and stopped it. I assume this is your floor? Oh. Oh, yes, thank you. I tore my gaze away from him and stepped out of the elevator. It took a huge effort for me to put the brown-eyed man out of my mind and focus on my new job. One of the girls took me under her wing and spent all morning showing me around and introducing me to people, and at lunchtime she invited me to join her. We were sitting in the basement cafeteria, and I was eating a salad when Mary said, you sure do work fast. I beg your pardon, sir? You've only been here half a day, and you've already gotten your first win. What does that mean? It means Dan's been watching you ever since you walked in here. Dan? Who's Dan? Over there, against the wall, at the table next to the candy machine. I looked that way and right into the brown-eyed man's eyes. He smiled and I quickly looked away and Mary laughed and said, I feel something. Is there something you want to tell me? I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't? How about we check it out? You can come over to our girl's house tonight after work. We usually stop by Antonio's to relax a little. Dan and some of the guys he works with happened to hang out there too. That night I couldn't go. I had to meet up with Mark to go look at some furniture. I spent most of the day thinking about Mark and Dan, Dan and Mark. And at 4 o'clock, I called Mark and lied to him for the first time. I told him that I was unbearable on my first day at work and had to stay late. At 5, I left work with the girls, and at 6, I was already dancing with Dan. Long story short, I broke up with Mark, and seven months later, Dan and I got married. It was a wonderful marriage, and I considered myself the luckiest woman in the world. Dan was the embodiment of myself, and we were perfect for each other. Dan's job involved a lot of traveling, and he was usually gone about twice a month for two to four days. 
Because of my job, I couldn't get out and go out with him. So on the nights he wasn't home, I usually stopped by the girls I work with for a drink, and we'd have dinner together, and sometimes we'd go to a movie. One night in our sixth year of marriage, Dan was on a two-day trip to Kansas City, and Mary, Sylvia, Tony, and I stopped at Antonio's for a drink. We were there for about an hour. I spent that time sipping margaritas and watching the other girls dance. I didn't dance, although I was often invited and would have loved to, but I was a married woman and thought it was wrong. I was watching Mary with the guy who asked her to dance when someone sat down across from me. I looked over and saw it was Mark. Hi, Kathy, how are you? Fine, Mark. What are you doing here? I thought you moved to Seattle. I moved back here about a month ago. We had a little chat. I sat there feeling guilty about what I did to him. After I met Dan, I started looking for some way to end the relationship so I could let Mark know that I had found someone else. I couldn't work up the courage to just walk up to him and tell him straight. One night at a party, he had a little too much to drink and was flirting with another girl. I could see she was interested in him, so I just watched until what I knew was going to happen, happened. She got up on her tiptoes to kiss him, and as soon as her lips touched his, I came up from where I was watching her. You cheating asshole, I growled at him, taking the ring off his finger. Here, give her this, I won't be needing it anymore. I left the party, came home and cried all night. I loved Mark. I really did. But after I met Dan, Mark had to go. He hadn't done anything wrong. He just wasn't Dan. That night when I gave him his ring back was no different than a lot of other parties we'd been to. He was a great guy, and girls were naturally drawn to him. He was born to flirt, but in all the time I knew him, he never did anything but flirt. If I had waited a few seconds, he would have pushed the girl away, but I didn't wait. I took advantage of the situation to break up with him. Mark had been trying to talk to me for a month, but I'd been avoiding him, and then he'd gotten a job in Seattle and I'd breathed a sigh of relief. And now he was sitting across from me at the table. He asked me to dance and I felt guilty about what I'd done to him, so I said yes. A few dances and glasses of margaritas later, I found myself naked in his apartment. I'm not excusing my stupidity. I shouldn't have been there. It was wrong. The booze and my guilt over what I had done to him all contributed to it. Dan was just a great lover, and he always managed to bring me to orgasm when we made love. That second night was alcohol-free, and I knew what I was doing. But to me, it was just sex. Mark was in no way a threat to our marriage to Dan. It was just a chance for me to experience the truly full sensation I felt when Mark was inside me. He knew how much I wanted it. After that night, I agreed to go out with him whenever Dan was out of town, but only when Dan was out of town. I reasoned that it was just a physical attraction, just sex, and it didn't cost Dan anything because I still loved him to death. What I'd given Mark in no way diminished what I'd given Dan. Did I feel guilty when Dan came home? Yes, I did. But as the old adage goes, what he doesn't know won't hurt him. Dan was still my life, and I always let him know that. One of the things that made our marriage special was our complete openness about our past sex lives. Dan and I too believed that the more we knew about what we did or didn't do to each other, what we liked or didn't like, the better our personal lives would be. I knew about the three women in his life before me and what he did with them, and he knew about Mark and the two other guys I knew before Mark and what I did with them. One night, after I had been dating Mark for almost a year, Dan asked me if I had any fantasies I would like to fulfill. I thought for a minute before I honestly said no. Why did you ask? Why would you think that? I don't know. I know I have a couple and I'm just wondering if you do. Do you have fantasies and you've never told me about them? Why not? You know I do anything for you, give you anything you want. I never mentioned them because you wouldn't like them, and you'd probably think the worst of me if you knew what they were. What are they? I don't want to talk about them. Then why did you bring it up? If you had a couple fantasies, it would be easier to talk about mine while we're talking about yours. 
Since you don't, I really don't want to bring mine up. Oh no, you brought it up and you have to tell me. But he wouldn't. For the next week, I brought it up every night, and he changed the subject. The more he refused to talk about his fantasies, the more determined I was to find out what they were. I wasn't kidding when I told him I would do anything for him. I loved him and would do absolutely anything he asked of me. It took me two weeks, but I finally convinced him that I wasn't going to leave things the way they were, and he stopped resisting. I always wanted to see you with another man. Talk about a shock to the system. I've imagined all sorts of kinky things, but never something like this. Oh, wow, honey. I have to say, this is a surprise. I don't know what to say. You're not upset with me, are you? Good God, no. It's just that the last two weeks, my head's been full of things you might dream about, but this wasn't one of them. You think you could do that? Jesus, baby, I don't know. How would we do it? Who would we use? Where would we do it? What if you didn't like it once you saw it happening? And if you did, how would it affect us? I noticed you didn't say anything about not being able to do it under supervision. I know I can do it. I told you about the time Mark and I were making love and his roommate walked in. He just stood there and watched. I, after throwing him a couple nervous glances, put him out of my mind, and Mark and I finished what we were doing. But that brings up another point. Mark's roommate is one thing, but seeing me with another man is another. I might get too horny and it wouldn't be good for you. I noticed you didn't say no. I told you I would do anything for you, and if that's what you want, I'll make it happen. But I want you to be sure it's what you really want. That's pretty much all I've been thinking about for the last two months. I'm sure, honey. I'm sure I want it to happen. Do you have someone in mind? No, honey, I'll let you pick the man. I want you to feel comfortable, so pick someone you think you can do it with. What if it turns out I like it, and I want to do it again? As long as I can be there and watch, keep at it. How would you feel about me doing it with an old lover? Who? Mark's back in town. He used to love rocking me on the bed. Maybe we can make it work if you promise me you won't be jealous. I can promise you that. Okay. I'll try to seduce him. No, no, I won't do that. I'll just tell him what you want and tell him I'll go to bed with him while you're around to see it. Okay. Any idea when? No. He keeps calling me and asking me out for dinner and drinks, but I keep turning him down. I'll have to wait until he calls me next time. I shouldn't have to chase after him. The next day I called Mark at work. You're never going to believe this. Dan wants to watch us in bed. Jesus, Katie. You didn't tell him about us, did you? Of course not. I explained what happened and I asked, can you do it? Can you fuck me while Dan watches us or should I look for someone else? I already knew his answer to that question before he said it. Of course I can. When? In a week or two. I don't want to rush things and make him think it happened quickly. I don't want him to get suspicious. What does it matter? He'll still be watching. But I don't want him to think we've done this before. That means that when we do it in front of him, you have to be damn careful not to say or do anything that might give it away. I still think it doesn't matter. If that gutless asshole wants to watch to have fun, what did you call him? A gutless asshole. Listen carefully, asshole. If I hear you berate him one more time, you can go find yourself another doll, because I sure as hell ain't gonna be around. You get what you get. You didn't do a damn thing to deserve it. You're just lucky. Dan entertains me better than you ever will, and the only reason you get anything from me is because I like to have that feeling of completeness every now and then. Do we have a deal? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. How are we gonna do this? I'm going to tell him that you and I had lunch and talked about it. We'll wait a week and then the three of us will get together and have a drink so you and Dan can get used to each other. 
And then if it works out, we'll go to your house or get a hotel room. I waited two days and then at dinner I told Dan that Mark had called me and invited me to have lunch with him the next day. If I know him as well as I think I do, he'll start hitting on me before lunch is even over. I tell him I'm stopping by after work for drinks with the girls at Antonio's and I know he'll be there. Are you absolutely sure you want to do this? Yeah, it's been on my mind for weeks now. I want it to happen as soon as possible. The next night I got home late and Dan was waiting for me. How'd it go? Pretty much as I thought it would. I met him for lunch and he tried to talk me into a date that night. But I told him I couldn't because I was meeting girls after work at Antonio's. He showed up after we had been there for about half an hour. He bought me a drink, danced with me, and told me that after we broke up, he never managed to meet the right girl. I let him grope me for a while and then let him talk me into going to his car. We were in a pretty serious relationship, and he invited me to go to his house with him. I said I agreed, but only under certain conditions, and then I explained them to him. At first he thought I was joking, but I convinced him that I wasn't. He agreed, and I set up a meeting for tomorrow night. We'll meet him at the Panda Bar, have a drink at half past seven, and if all goes well, we'll leave there and go to his house. I've got to ask you again, kid. Are you sure this is what you want? I'm 100% sure, Katie. I have to do this. Mark was sitting in a booth waiting for Dan and I to get there. Mark stood up as we approached, and I introduced the two men, and then we sat down, ordered drinks, and chatted for a while. I could tell from the intonation in Mark's voice what he was thinking, and I read it in his eyes. He looked at Dan like he was a wuss. In that moment, I decided Mark was history. I loved Dan and I wouldn't subject him to ridicule, even the kind of silent ridicule he didn't even know he had. I warned Mark, but apparently it didn't get through to him. We'd get through the night and then I wouldn't see Mark or talk to him again. I did like the feeling I was getting but not enough to let him disrespect the man I loved. After about half an hour, I decided it was time to start the show. How about it, guys? Are we ready? I'm ready, Dan said. Me too, Mark replied. I stood up and told Mark to show the way. When we got to Mark's apartment, I undressed and then watched Mark undress. I looked at Dan and he gave me a slight nod, indicating that I should continue. I couldn't read the expression on his face, but his eyes were fixed on us. God, that was great. I moaned and looked at Dan. He wasn't there. I looked around the room, but I didn't see him. I tried to pull away from Mark, but he wouldn't let go of me yet. Dan, Dan, I shrieked. I struggled to get out from under him and he looked down at me in confusion. Get the hell away from me, get off me. I finally got out from under him and ran around the apartment in a panic screaming, Dan, Dan, where are you, Dan? But he wasn't there. I grabbed my clothes and started to get dressed. What are you doing? Mark asked. Dan's gone. I have to find him. I had more caresses planned for tonight, baby. You can't leave now. I have to. I have to find Dan. Well, you're gonna have to walk back to your car because I'm sure as hell not gonna get dressed and drive you. If you feel that way, get used to using your hand because I'm not coming back. Mark laughed at me and said, what, you think you're made of gold? The only reason I'm sleeping with you is because it gives me a chance to put horns on the asshole you left me for. Go on, get out. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. You miserable bastard. I growled at him, running out of his room and slamming the door behind me. I got lucky and caught a cab almost as soon as I was outside Mark's apartment. As we rode in the cab, I caught myself praying that when I got to the Panda to pick up my car, Dan would be sitting at the bar waiting for me. Maybe he couldn't stand seeing me with another man and left. Maybe he saw how much I liked it and decided to leave me alone. When I got to Panda's, I paid the driver and rushed inside the bar. I looked around, but Dan was nowhere to be seen. I hurried back to the parking lot and saw that his car wasn't there. In a deep panic, I ran to my car, opened it to get in, 
but then stopped when I saw two envelopes lying on the driver's side seat. On one of them was written in large letters, Open me first. I took the envelopes, got in the car, and turned on the overhead light. I sat staring at the two envelopes, and I had a sudden feeling that I didn't really want to know what was in them. But I knew I had to open them anyway. I opened the one that had me first written on it. It was four sheets of paper scribbled in Dan's handwriting. There was no greeting, no dear Kathy, or even just Kathy. The first seven words hit me like a sledgehammer to the stomach. I know all about you and Mark. I've known for about two months now. Two months ago, when I was supposed to go to Akron, the trip was cancelled at the last minute. And when I got home, you weren't there. I figured you were somewhere with the girls, and knowing I wouldn't be home, I figured you'd be out late with them, so I didn't wait for you. When I woke up at half past seven, you still weren't home, and I had a bad feeling. I made my bed, cleaned up after myself so you wouldn't know I was there, and went to work. I called you that afternoon to say I'd be home around seven. And in the course of the conversation, I casually asked how your evening had gone. You told me you came home early and curled up with a book until you fell asleep. A week later, I organized a fake trip to Dayton and was at our house when you came home from work. I followed you and then sat outside Mark's apartment until 6 the next morning. Somehow, I just couldn't bring myself to believe that you were just up there playing cribbage or something and time slipped away from you. I loved you more than life and thought your love for me was just as strong, but I guess I didn't know you as well as I thought I did. But I do know myself. I knew that if I came face to face with you, I would shed tears. You would have begged for forgiveness and made promises. I knew that my love for you was so strong that I would forgive you, but I also knew that our marriage would never be the same again. I knew that no matter what promises you made, I could never trust you again. I knew that every time I went on a business trip, I would sit in a hotel room and be tormented by the thought that you had someone else. I knew that every time I would call you on the phone and you wouldn't answer, my first thought would be, I wonder who she's with right now. You can't go through life without trust, and it was a given that I would never trust you again. I needed to leave you behind, and I needed to do it in such a way that there was no going back. Confrontation would only lead me into denial. I would have accepted what you did, forgiven you, and then continued to lead a shitty life. I needed something that would sink so deep into my soul that I could never bring myself to look at you or talk to you again. This whole fantasy of me looking at you with another man was fake. I knew that seeing you with Mark would do what was required of me. The idea was simple in itself. Tell you about the fantasy and let you finish the rest. I even acted reluctantly and made you draw it out of me. Oh my god, that's beautiful, you think. I can do this with Mark in front of him and get the best of both worlds, my lover, and a stable family life. I knew you would when you said, what if it turns out I like it and I want to do it again? You've already set me up to have your affair continue only in front of me and not behind my back. Since you're reading this letter, it's a done deal. The fact that I didn't rush to your car to get the envelopes tells you that I found your liaison with your lover as disgusting as I expected. I took time off work today and several of my friends helped me move out of my house. I cancelled all of our joint credit cards and withdrew from my savings account. I left you everything in checks and two certificates of deposit. The remaining five and what would have been half of your savings will help me rent an apartment or condo. I think it's only fair, since you kicked me out, you pay some of my moving expenses. I don't want to talk to you or see you again. Don't call, write, or try to catch me at work. I never want anything to do with you ever again. I dropped the pages from my hands and cried. I sobbed and tears streamed down my face as I realized what I had done. Good God, how could I have been so stupid? I had let flirting with a man I didn't care about ruin what I had with the man I adored. The man who meant more to me than my own life. With trembling fingers, I picked up the second envelope and opened it. I shrieked loudly and slumped back in my seat, and the divorce papers fell from my fingers to the floor.